Well, I belong to an industry which is perceived to be the future of mobility. Well, it's not the future of mobility, it's the present of mobility. And, and that's how things have started changing. Now, COVID, uh, COVID in terms have accelerated the growth of drones and the acceptance of drones throughout the industry. Every single industry has realized the potential of drones and the utilizations to a maximum extent. And, and those include inspection, surveillance, security, agri, delivery, to, to count a few. These are industry verticals which has emerged. For us, uh, how we saw this entire thing changing was from, was from zero to where we are today. We have completed 1,500 plus commercial flights today. These flights have been done in different conditions, different cities. We have covered eight cities in India where we, are, where we are conducting these flights every day, carrying multiple things. Healthcare is a primary focus area for us. Healthcare has been, has been something which has adopted drone delivery in a very, very nascent stages. That's because it's always a time sensitive and when it comes to time versus cost, healthcare is an industry which adapts time uh, over cost. Drone delivery kick-started, I would say, last year, and it's just been like 10 months. And within this 10 months, we, we added on 20 plus clients that we're currently working on, on quick commerce, e-commerce, uh, on, on healthcare side of things, on agri-commodity. And multiple of these industries have just started taking up shape in a different way. And there's a lot of potential that we're going to explore, a lot of potential that we're going to tap in in the, in the coming months to go for. Creating infrastructure to setting up hubs, to setting up different uh, architecture in place to make sure that this is going to stay and this is going to become more commercial in nature. That's all has happened because we got a lot of time in place. During the COVID, while there was a lot of adoption of drones which was happening, for multiple use cases, we were developing things. We were doing things in a more prudent manner to, to have the best of best technology to coming in, utilizing the best of resources available in India, the engineering resources to develop something which is going to come up live, and it should not take more time from going from a trial or POC stage to a commercial stage. And today we are at a commercial stage, making sure that, making sure that this all thing contributes to making India a global drone hub by 2030. That's the vision. That's where we are leading. And how we see drone delivery? Drone delivery is going to contribute to at least 60 to 70% of that growth which is going to happen towards making India a global drone hub. So, yeah, I would say that COVID has accelerated a lot of growth for us. The government has done a lot on, on the drone side, right? They came out with a PLI scheme uh, and, uh, and the ministry themselves have been really focused on, on getting this to take off. Uh, on the flip side, there are, there are challenges in terms of what you can import in the country. How, is, how are these two factors playing for the business? One is, on one side, you have PLI and an enabling environment. On the other side, you are restricted to import uh, stuff, uh, which, which could create challenges in terms of how the ecosystem is within India and it may take some time to grow. How is that impacting business, if at all? So, at first, it did impact it, but you have to look at the, look at the brighter picture of why PLI was brought in. And I remember my all conversation with Ministry of Civil Aviation that PLI was never intended for drones. And for drones, PLI came in like fortnight. So the entire ministry, all stakeholders, all, all OEMs, everybody was involved in suggesting and giving suggestions in terms of making sure that we have a, we have a strong pie for the Indian domestic industry to grow. And PLI, PLI was brought in context to make sure that the domestic industry and domestic manufacturers, for even for components, can get in and have a larger market share to, to cater for. Now, uh, if you talk about the ban, the ban is on drones. The ban is not on components. You can still import components, try to make uh, frames here, try to do all mechanical structures here. India is a big base for carbon fiber structuring, for plastic molding, etc. And for all mechanical and structural things, Indian, Indian uh, manufacturers, SMEs, can very well be utilized. The electronic components do come from outside. The import is not banned. We do import those components and try to assemble and try to make majority of the things out here. 
in context to provide and, and bring up a base for PLI to take off. Now, for any, any electronic component to come in place or for anybody to utilize, I'm sure that a product which is coming from an R&D stage, you're not going to utilize commercially uh, that product without, without having a reliability factor or without having a lot of data to prove the reliability of that particular equipment. We have equipments which we are procuring from outside which has proven reliability over last few years, five years, seven years. Those are electronic components that we use in drones. And, and, and drones are as risky as uh, any, other, any other aircraft in the sky. So you have to be very careful on what equipments you're utilizing. Indian drone manufacturers on component level, on electronic components also are taking up. There are a lot of manufacturers which are getting in line to develop things. And with reliability, with more data, with more testing, I'm sure uh, two, three years down the line, we'll be able to utilize indigenized components to a larger extent. And that's the idea for PLI to kick in, to at least provide a base for people, for SMEs, for other startups to get in and at least start making these or investing in R&D to make these components in India, which I think is working to a certain extent.